Last week, representatives from all over the world met virtually and also in person to discuss a post-2020 biodiversity framework. And some got to attend in person, including French ambassador to China, Lohan Billy. He said China's hosting of the biodiversity conference reminds him of when France hosted the historic Paris Climate Summit. What's his takeaway from the event and what has he learned about China's biodiversity efforts and cooperation with France? Let's take a listen. Your president spoke at the leaders' meeting. He talks about the land and sea, 30 percent, of course, the French has always been looking after. So how do you see the challenges of achieving that from your perspective? If I take, by example, the speech of um, President Xi, uh, it's really the idea that biodiversity, protection of biodiversity, is at the heart of development of policies, of uh, economic policies, and that it can't work separately. And in fact, in many leaders, in a way, in another, uh, we, we find that, uh, that same uh, idea. And uh, already, uh, on that respect, China is doing quite well. So the small difference that is still existing is probably something that can be uh, achievable. So you believe there's already a transitional mindset? We can see that the convergence, the mobilization of uh, international community is quite high. Um, yeah, there is definitely a lot in common in our mindset. Mm. Uh, and also China tries to establish many national parks. Uh, you've been living yes. in China for some time. You even went to see some of these places to compare notes. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, how do you see this as the way for China, you know, in order to protect its own habitat? Well, it's of course uh, very important and uh, I'm also proud that uh, we are cooperating uh, together for that. Uh, next month I will go to Zhejiang province where we have uh, a cooperation between Agence Française de Développement and uh, local authorities. It's not only about financing projects, it's also about uh, exchange of expertise, it's about uh, twinning between national parks in France, in Europe and in China. And I think this exchange it's of expertise... It's about synergy, isn't it's it? It's about synergy, it's about uh, 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 good, uh, good experience. Um, so it's, uh, it's very important. Already uh, the number of species which are protected uh, within this national park is, uh, is very key. And at each time that I go to um, some provinces and I discuss with local authorities, I can uh, really realize that it's not uh, only a speech from the top, but also <laughs> that uh, people in the provinces, they, they are aware of uh, the need and they are really committed. Uh, during this, uh, this weekend, I was... Uh, I spent some time in Yunnan and especially in uh, Dali uh, district and in, uh, I could really feel that with my interlocutors, uh, um, the secre um, party secretary, uh, the governor, uh, they are really mobilized. Did you enjoy that, the trip? I enjoyed it too much. <laughs> <laughs> Having said that though, maybe a lot of work to come uh, because we heard both your president, French president, uh, Mr. Macron and uh, also Chinese president talking about financial support. China has uh, promised to establish a 1.5 billion uh, fund for developing countries. Well, your president, Mr. Macron, has been talking about multilateral financial institutions need to look at biodiversity as one of the key when they're making decisions. So, uh, Mr. Ambassador, how do you see these commitments coming from presidents on the financial issue? Well, the president also mentioned the fact that 30 uh, percent of our financial flows uh, on developments will be uh, uh, earmarked for biodiversity related uh, project. So I think once again on these two speeches you, you see that the direction is about uh, the same with the creation of a new fund but uh, also from national commitments to direct uh, national uh, help or national development uh, funds for biodiversity related uh, project. Another thing is about how should we see the different development stage. We know that there were some controversial issues earlier, both at the climate change summits and, of course, you will see that in the biodiversity discussion. How, how does France uh, uh, look at that issue now? Because we've been really going through some ups and downs. Well, France has always been advocating uh, the idea that they were also a uh, differentiated uh, responsibility and is one of the countries which is contributing more for uh, public aid for development. Uh, our president mentioned uh, also the initiative on uh, the green uh, wall um, forest in the Sahel uh, region, 
where we mobilize uh, 18 billion uh, euros. Already, I think, 9 billion, I mentioned, have been already uh, invested for that project, to speed up that project. It's so very interesting that he used the green Great Wall. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes I think the, the idea is quite, is quite clear. <laughs> and um, so um, France is very coherent in his approach. We are, of course, um, ambitious in terms of speeches, but we are also ambitious in the way we mobilize our own resources, in the way we advocate, we are advocating the issue within the EU, within the, the UN system, the Bretton Woods uh, organization. And I think in the last, uh, I'll say, it's since the Paris Agreement, a lot of ground has been uh, already covered. What your president said regarding, you know, whether imports, uh, the products are going to be uh, related to biodiversity concerns uh, and also uh, what does it mean for investment? What is going to be the decision making process regarding biodiversity? Uh, that is a very positive sign about how leaders are thinking. But at the same time, Mr. Ambassador, some also worry that whether some in other parts of the world might use this as a barrier for trade. Well, I think um some may try to excuse um, the tra tra traffic barrier to avoid their responsibility as well. So we have to be, uh, we have to have a sound uh, debate um, also because we, we need some transparency, we need some uh, redevability about what's going on. Uh, some countries may say that uh, it's legal uh, load uh, wood, by example, uh, but at the same time, uh, do they have really all the procedures internally? to assure the international commu commu community that it's uh, really renewable wood that they are exporting. So we need probably some time for discussing this kind of, uh, of things. But um, at the same time, I think it's really give a direction because if we don't protect uh, the main pollen of the planet, we are not going to go anywhere. And at the same time, we need to help the country and we need to, be, to work together with the country. How shall we make sure that the process of discussion will not spoil the spirit of discussion. That's always a very tricky thing, you know. Um, as a seasoned diplomat, you know that very well. Tell me more about your take on that. Well, I think that for the Paris Agreement, we, um, we benefit of uh, the help of many countries around the world to have also uh, regional coordination and uh, to use their influence. Uh, this time, I think uh, China is, uh, is on the driver's seat uh, role. But um, I just can say that uh, I can ensure that uh, France will be very constructive and uh, helpful to achieve an ambitious result. Mm. We also noticed that some of the largest economies in the world are still not a member of CBD. Uh, many wonder when that would come and many wonder whether that is fair for the rest of the world who are already signing on it. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, what's your take? I think uh, leading by example always achieves results. So. I love that, yeah. And the other thing is about how to maintain this momentum from now until April. Uh, it is likely to be another in-person meeting if the pandemic situation recedes. Um, so how do you see France's role will be in that regard? For example, working with the host of the conference with China, for example, working with the UN as well, please. Well, I think um, our leaders are having um, very regular conversations yes. and I think uh, that's really uh, helpful to exchange, um, exchange notes. We will have also um, a new uh, Paris Forum where this kind of ideas will be discussed. So I think we can, take, we can benefit of all these um, other meetings, uh, G20 meetings, all these meetings that are already planned to keep the momentum and uh, to help us to work uh, together. When we look at the global issues, some of the important spirits you already mentioned, but every country has their own circumstances. Mm -hmm. We know some countries are very much struggling about their own politics and things like that. So how shall we see this uh, pace of discussion? It's, it's, it's possible to bring China and France together onto the same platform, but you know, bring everybody else I think we, we have to convince um, people that first the question of uh, biodiversity and health is one. 
and that uh, we are not we're just working because in yes, health. Yes. we're just not working because we love we love wildlife, which is fine. But we work also because we want to protect our citizens. We have also to um, to convince people that investing in protecting biodiversity is a sound investment, economic investment, and even for a better life of the population, it's an important investment, and even for the future of the planet. But maybe the future of the planet is always a bit too far away, even if we think that the clock is ticking. But just even short-term investment can make the life of people better. And I think that in that sense, uh, China and France can be uh, very helpful to convince countries which are yet not completely uh, convinced. We have seen over the past uh, two to three years dramatically worsening international environment in terms of multilateralism and working together. But you know, conferences like this, once we're here in person, it seems that it gives us some kind of momentum that things are working, it seems, to the better. I don't know what is your gut no, feeling. I, I completely agree. Uh, speaking about Jacques Chirac, um, some, some time before 2002, I don't remember exactly when, but he says, the house is burning and we are looking somewhere else. It was in South Africa. And um, so in meeting, we can see that we are not somewhere else. And so it gives us uh, some optimism on the fact that even leaders coming from very different um, background, different uh, system, are convinced that we have to, to work to, together. I think it's, uh, yes, it gives us optimism for the future of the planet.